So the macula is that part of the retina, which uh, is used for seeing details and uh, for discerning very fine detail, in fact. So anything that affects the macula will affect the vision in a very substantial way. It will cause reduced vision. It will cause distortion of vision. Um, it will affect the, uh, the image size. So you can see why any trauma or, 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 or defect in the macula would be uh, fairly devastating to the patient's vision. So the, any pathology that affects the macula, such as a macula hole or an epiretinal membrane will affect the macula. But there are other conditions which can also affect the macula. For example, a retinal detachment can affect the macula. And usually these are fairly serious uh, conditions which once they develop, such a, uh, so for example, if there is a detached retina which also affects the macula, then the visual, uh, the impact on the vision is quite significant. Um, the way you approach the macula to treat the macula surgically involves vitrectomy surgery. That means going inside the eye with little keyholes uh, um, to uh, remove the vitreous and then access the macula this way and treat the macula, be it whether a membrane peel is required or whether you want to fix a macula hole or whether you want to fix a retinal detachment where the pathology usually is more peripheral, but if the macula is involved, then uh, it is important to reattach that retina fairly quickly in order to uh, reduce the long-term effect on the vision. This is a really good question because uh, it's, it's important to, if you're treating, it depends on what's the underlying cause of the problem. So for example, if we're talking about an epiretinal membrane, no, it's not an emergency, but it's, done, it's usually done once the patient has decided that the effect on vision is significant enough to warrant surgery. But other conditions such as macular holes, I like to operate on fairly rapidly. So that does not, that means within, within a month or six weeks, but not longer. Uh, of course, if a patient presents with, uh, with poor vision and a long-standing macular hole of let's say five years duration, then the, the need to operate soon is really not, not there. On the other hand, if a patient presents with a retinal detachment and the macula has just become detached, then it is important and it is urgent to operate quickly, yes. And here, because we want to rescue vision and prevent significant vision loss or, or prevent significant uh, long-term vision loss and allow vision recovery, of course, to, 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 to develop. Okay, so macular hole surgery success rates are very high in general, in particular with small holes. So the outcome of surgery, i.e. success, depends on the size of the hole and how long the patient has been symptomatic for. So small holes and holes of short duration do very well. And by very well, I mean the closure rate of the macular hole is very high, i.e. greater than 95%. However, big holes, and holes that have been there for a long time, so by this I mean more than six to 12 months, the success rate is less, is lower, and the visual outcomes are also not as good, which is really why I mentioned earlier the, that there is benefit in operating relatively soon on a macula hole. Um, this is a great question, I think, because the, the answer to this question depends on where, when are we doing the surgery? In other words, if you were doing the surgery 20 years ago where, where the equipment was very different, the recovery was much longer. And in, by today's standards, we operate using very small keyholes. We often do not need to suture our keyholes. So the trauma to the eye is much less and therefore the recovery is much faster. And because you're often, more often than not, not using any sutures, the, the the patient's uh, comfort is much greater. So really recovery is much, much easier and much quicker as well. Okay, so the risks of, of macular surgery really are effectively the same as the risks of doing vitrectomy surgery. I, once you go inside the eye with the keyholes I mentioned earlier to remove the vitreous, we know that there is a risk of, for example, a retinal detachment. We know there is a risk of retinal tear formation after surgery. We know there are 
uh, there are risks of infection. The risk of infection, fortunately, is very low. You're talking about less than one in 3,000. The risk of retinal detachment, however, is much more significant, and that's more in the order of, of, of about one in 100 to one in 200. Uh, other risks include things like inflammation, pressure in the eye, maybe uh, issues with the lens implant if the lens has been put in place, and very commonly, of course, cataracts. So patients who have who have a who are phakic, in other words, who have not had cataract surgery, are very likely to develop a cataract after surgery for the macula, and in particular, if uh, intravitreal gas has been used as a tamponade agent at the end of surgery.